some sort of fear in you that you could lose if you don't perform. Undefeated Mikkel Kessler of Denmark instilled in him that fear. And last November, in front of 50,000 in Wales, Calzaghe battled the Dane in what many deemed his biggest test yet. Great body punch by Kessler. Calzaghe stands tall and keeps throwing. Just at the time when everyone thought the fight was moving for Kessler. Here comes Calzaghe. Calzaghe made an adjustment and came back and took over the fight completely. Good left hand by Calzaghe. And another. And another. And suddenly Calzaghe is landing his straight left right down the chute. When Joe Calzaghe beat Michael Kessler, it finally just let all his critics know, we have to accept this guy. He's for real. There's nobody else in the world exactly like Joe Calzaghe. There's a reason that this guy has reigned as a world champion for 10 plus years. There's a reason he's made 21 title defenses. It's because he really is that good. Ten weeks before his fight with Calzaghe, Hopkins arrives in New Orleans to visit fitness guru Mackie Shillstone. Two years ago, Shillstone helped to move up from middleweight when he unseated light heavyweight champion Antonio Tarver. Bernard is here in New Orleans at our program for the sole purpose for me to understand what is the performance age of a 43-year-old man. Do you look there, do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember, remember that? that? I live well, but when you run into history-making events, you want to give yourself the best advice, the best fitness guy, the best nutrition, and this is where Mackie and his team comes together. We're looking for joint integrity, and his joints are beautiful, wonderful. Those structures that we're looking at within the body is, is, is to make sure that the most proper alignment we can get is going to reduce stresses to his tendons, the muscles, his joints, allowing him to train at the level he needs to train at without repetitive stress injuries. Go ahead and lie right here on the table. I'm going to have him CAT scanned. I'm going to see everything in his body, down to how much bone, how much fat, how much blood, how much everything. Listen, you couldn't beat me up like that. Yeah, I mean, that look, that guy look like you, something to eat. You, you're With every test he puts Hopkins through, Shillstone gathers data that will dictate the pace of training camp. I mean, can you imagine the executioner? This doesn't look kind of, this, this looks sure, kind of high. Kind of high. <laughs> From finding his breaking point on a treadmill. There you go. There you go. Just relax with it. To studying his metabolic rate. To constructing the right meal plan. So gotcha. pretty much we're going to be, uh, if you think of it like this, taking away the fat. this and replacing it with your muscle. Ah, That's five pounds of fat. Just kill. <laughs> Mackie brings a lot to me and to the table to be victorious for this fight. This has 100% dealing with getting my body prepared to go to battle. Four weeks later, Camp shifts to Southern California, where the process of sharpening the tools of the 43-year-old fighter begins. The way that we overcome running fatigue is by running efficiency. The biggest thing Bernard has to overcome is the physical aspects of his age, and to put that aside and to act and perform 20 years younger. And when you got cardio, you got a tank of gas to fight all day long. That's what Mackie gives you. It's extremely painful. You know, I'm not a robot. Trust me. Here, go, right here. Come on. I'm going to get together and create a strategic plan to build and take what was be considered an aging warrior and recreate something that will be guaranteed to create destruction. About 30 miles outside of Cardiff, Wales, lies the quaint working class town of Newbridge, home to one of the UK's most beloved sports icons. Hi, we're in Newbridge, uh, not far from where I live and where I got uh, brought up most of my life. How are you, buddy? Hi. Yeah, good, good thank you. Are you OK? Yeah, fine. Not too much around you, but you know it's home. It's amazing when you see Joe walking around the streets. How you doing? You all right? You all right? He knows everyone around here. You know that's what happens when you when you live in the same place for 30 years. What's your name? Gabriel. It is a humble place. Perhaps that's the secret of his success: the fact that he's never become starry. Yeah, he's brave. 
him, yeah. Okay. We are all proud of him. He, at last, he's having a bit of recognition. I mean, he's the top man in the world. Never mind about Wales. Like, he's only one Joe Kalsaki, isn't it? I mean, we've got other fighters, but I mean, obviously, there's only one of him. Well, catch you later, the best, Joe. Ciao, boys. Thanks, Thanks really much. Much. Ciao, Joe. Ciao. Thanks, sir. Calzaghe has run along Newbridge's winding lanes for as long as he can remember. Training close to home offers a comfort zone for the champion. Where I live, I'm lucky where, you know, loads of hillsides, fresh air, you know, I get left alone. And it's, it's, it's nice and peaceful when, you, when you're training for a big fight and everything you need this year. So, you know, what's the point of going away? And uh, like I said, I've been champion in my 11th year and it's uh, obviously right for me. Despite the fact that, yeah, he does earn a lot of money, He's kept true to his roots, and I think that's really why the British public have, have taken him to their hearts. The unheated old rugby club that serves as his gym offers nothing more than bare necessities. Alongside of him for every workout is Enzo Calzaghi, Joe's father, who introduced his son to the sport almost 30 years ago. I won my first British schoolboy ABA title back in 1985. I realized boxing was going to be my, you know, my, my thing. I was, I was really blessed at that. I always said in my mind that I'm going to be a world champion one day and just completely dedicate my life to boxing. Despite a background in music, not boxing, Enzo became Joe's first and only trainer. And in a sport that has witnessed the volatile decline of plenty of father-son trainer-fighter relationships, the Calzaghis have proved a winning combination. He's trained by this extremely confident human being who grew up as a jazz musician and had the audacity to think, I, with no background in boxing, am capable of training my son to become a great prize fighter and went out and proved that he could do it. And incidentally, I think there's a direct link between Enzo's background and Joe's fighting style because if I had to use one word to describe what Calzaki does in the ring, it is jazz. Good job, well done. Keep good going. For Joe, I just think it's the icing on the cake that he gets every great moment in his career he's been able to share with his dad. I know I made him proud. I'm proud of him as well, so he's a great coach. You know, he's great. I wouldn't change the world. Pound pound. Best ever boxer in the world. There's the adage, you know, too many cooks spoil the soup, but I don't think that that's true for Hopkins. He's not going to get overwhelmed with too much information. In Bernard Hopkins' Pasadena camp, there's not one, but four men working with the fighter. Joining conditioning coach Mackie Shillstone are longtime co-trainers Nassim Richardson and John David Jackson, as well as head trainer Freddie Roach. I can show him some little tricks here and there and so forth, but he knows most of them. And uh, I'm not going to teach him a lot of new things, but the goal is just to come up with the right game plan to beat Telzaki. I have uh, one goal, and the ultimate goal is to get Bernard to victory. You know, I wouldn't let my ego get in the way of, of what we're trying to achieve here. Does he truly need us to, to train him? No, but I've been training for a long time. He respects our abilities as trainers. I put up a team like any general, like any Fortune 500 company, to now let's go and win with physics and with knowledge. And they bring that to the table. To preserve harmony in camp, the trio of trainers emphasize teamwork and remain mindful of Shillstone and how his fitness program impacts their work inside the ring. For boxing, like, Mackie has to step back and let me do my job. On the running days and conditioning days, I'll step back and let him do his job. We'll work together, and um, you know there'll be a little friction at first, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll all blend in. Mackie doesn't teach me how to throw a jab. Mackie doesn't teach me how to throw a right hand. Mackie is a master at what he does, and my trainers, Nazim Richardson and Freddie Roach and John David Jackson, um, they fill in the boxing aspects of it. In this fight. Those aspects will focus on formulating a game plan to counter Calzaghe, whose two-fisted attack is one of the most relentless in the sport today. You know, Calzaghe, he puts you on the ropes, so he throws a lot of punches. Referee Terry O'Connor watching and watching, and he'll stop it right now. So he wins a lot of rounds by just throwing a lot of punches. We need to win the fight in the middle of the ring. 
I want Bernard to stay in the pocket and fight this guy on the inside and work that body from close range. Yeah.